What is going on, YouTube family? Tio here, Simplistic Fishing, back at you today. Still waiting for Steve to get out of the shop, so doing some more lake breakdowns. We're going to stick with Sam Rayburn Reservoir down southeast Texas. Did want to give you guys a heads up, though, on the hummingbird files. I'm having a little bit of an issue with trying to figure out how to display those. So hummingbird only allows up to 50 tracks to be displayed. And each one of those creek channels that we did, I made that a track. So I tried to convert those to waypoints, and I did that. It made my waypoints go up over 2,500 waypoints, which Hummingbird only allows up to 2,500. So that was a problem as well. So I'm trying to figure that out. So stick, stick tight, hang tight, whatever you want to call it. I'm trying to figure it out. Hopefully I get it figured out. If not, what we'll do is we'll just switch this lake up. We'll have a north and a south. Um, but I really don't want to max out your waypoints. So trying to figure that out for you guys for right now, it's not on the site, but you can still get the KML file, look at it in Google Earth and kind of get a good idea. Maybe you make your own path, just a real simplified path. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's finish out this lake on the Google Earth side. Let's talk about Sam Rayburn Reservoir. Here we go. If you missed the first video on Sam Rayburn, definitely go back and look at it. I'll put a link up at the top so you guys can click on it. But really what we did on that one is we talked about this south side. So pretty much anything south of 147, we covered from the Google Earth Waypoint side. Now, we didn't talk about uh, offshore hotspots or the fish attractors, but we did talk about all the different creek channels that were up here, which were marked, as well as um, all the different ramps and things like that that you could locate throughout uh, this different area, as well as roadbeds and things like that. So that's what you see with those little yellow marks. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go north and do the same exact thing. So north of 147, and we're going to do the same thing. Now, the first thing we need to do, obviously, is we want to draw back the water so we can kind of see what it is that we've uncovered here. So I'm going to go up here and click on this little icon right here. This shows me the historical imagery. And then I believe our best image is actually going to be back in 2009 it was or maybe this is it right here 2012 so 11 of 2012 looks pretty good you can see where we marked those creek channels before so let's go ahead and start here on 147 i'm going to start on the east side and we're just going to work our way all the way up and then we'll come back down the uh the west side so right in through here and you know that if you watched the last video i wasn't able to find a lot of lay downs debris stuff like that i mean this was really more about finding those creek channels and then you know, finding the, the things around those creek channels. But every once in a while, I'd find some good stuff. And so this was one of those exceptions where there were some laydowns out here off of these humps. Looks like there's some stick-ups too, maybe some root balls, things like that that you could fish around. You've got some laydowns out here as well. And then another one right here. There's something going on here. I can't tell what it is, but definitely this, this area looks interesting. You've also got a brush pile that's out here as well. That you could fish around so you've got these little humps that are out here and i've never fished here before so i don't know if these would be good areas to fish around but i would imagine there's probably something in here that they're going to be attracted to so take a look at those areas maybe even go over here and look at this hump where you've got some uh, some stick ups in here as well they can relate to that there's just a lot of different stuff that they could definitely relate to but i marked kind of the primo things that i could find uh, via google earth now also You've got an old roadbed that runs straight from this side, from the east side, all the way across. And so I went ahead and just marked it for you guys. But there's an old roadbed down there somewhere. And when you zoom into this little hump that's out here, or this little island, uh, you'll notice. Now, obviously, this island's not above water when the, when the lake's at pool. It's actually underwater. I'll show it to you guys here in a minute. But you can see the roadbed here. And so just following that roadbed, you may be able to find uh, things around that roadbed, fish attractors, things like that. So definitely take a look at that roadbed and just scan around it and see what you can find. So let's take a look at this because we do have these humps out here. You can see the water is drawn down. Let's take it up to 2019. This is what it would look like today if you were to go out there. So you would not realize that that stuff's out there. So be very careful. If there are boat lanes for this lake, I definitely suggest getting in. It looks like you've got some low... Uh, lying areas that you could get yourself in trouble with, some stumps and things like that. So just be careful when you're out there, but definitely take a look at these areas. All right, so I'm going to keep moving up, and we're going to move over here into this first pocket. Um, so the first thing, or first, I guess you could call it a cove, or a, a ch big channel, I don't know, 
let's just call it whatever. <laughs> let's just keep going so I don't screw this video up. So here we go. We've got a lay down here. We've also got another lay down in this area as well. As we move up the bank line, again, not seeing too much, but there are some things here. There was a little bit of rock that was right off of this point, and that looked interesting because I couldn't find a lot of rock on this lake. So if you find areas like this, those could be good areas. So definitely take a look at that little point there. Got another lay down going on in here. As we move further back in here, some more lay downs and some debris to check out. You've got a, a nice boat ramp over here. This is Jackson Hill Marina. So you got a really nice ramp right in here. You could fish around. You've also got some rock and stuff you can see here close to the ramp. Another lay down out here just outside the ramp. And then right in here, I just put check because I can't tell if this is an old rock pile, uh, if it's just debris, or maybe it's nothing. Um, but it almost looks like a pile of rocks there. So take a look at that and see if there's uh, there's anything there. As we get further up in here, you're going to notice that there's a lot of brush and debris that's in this area. So if I pull up right here, uh, you'll see there's one right here. There's another one here. There's another one out over here. And then a couple back in here as well. Now, again, if I raise that water up, there's another pile back in here, too. If we go further back in here, you'll notice there's a little pile going on in there as well. So if I pull this up and I pull that water back, you're going to notice that all that stuff's going to be under the water. And so you wouldn't notice those piles were there. So definitely take a look at those. Um, if you're a crappie fisherman, for sure, go out and check those out and see if those could be crappie piles that we've just uncovered. So let's go back here. Let's draw it back to where we were and let's keep on moving up. So I'm going to keep moving up the bank line here. I just saw a couple things. There's a little lay down here, another brush pile you could check out that's right in this area. You can kind of see it as I zoom in. I don't want to get too far because I'll make you guys dizzy zooming in and out. So I'm going to pull back a little bit. And then up in here, this area right here had a lot of stuff just right here on this bank line. So I don't know if this is a possible creek channel swing or something going on and where it's, it's coming up close to the bank, but a lot of activity just right in this area. So if I zoom in, you're going to see this. We've got some laydowns in here, some more laydowns. We've got some good standing timber um, that might even be in the water, but at least, you know, they'll relate to that kind of stuff. So real good area right in here. You've also got more laydowns going on in, the, in there. Further up the bank line, some additional laydowns. So just a really good bank line. You can see we got some more in here. And then I also said to check this side right here because this looks like some sort of a drop. Maybe that's a big rock right there. I don't know, but definitely check that. That looks like a good ambush point uh, for the bass to take advantage of. So anyways, check that bank line out. I was also going out here and I could only pick one bank line to fish. I think I probably headed that way uh, at least to start. So then moving through here, we've got some brush right here. I've also got some additional brush going on back in this little pocket and some more laydowns. I'm going to zoom back out so you can see where I'm at. We're getting a little bit further back in this pocket now, or this, this cove channel, whatever the heck it is. I'm having a hard time speaking today. So here, as we get back further back in here, you're going to start seeing these creek channels. So underneath that power line is where we first start seeing our first creek channel. So I've got these marked for you guys. And again, I'm working on the uh, the hummingbird stuff for right now. We're not able to, to show those, but we will we will get that working. And then the uh, the Garmin and the Lawrence guys, you guys are awesome. You're, you're good to go. They love the tracks, and we can put them in there, and they look beautiful. So you've also got another creek channel up here. And then you've got laydowns over in this area as well that I marked. And I, you got some standing timber and stuff to fish around over here with a possible little, you know, small little creek channel that kind of goes through all that stuff. So that could be a good area to go check out for sure. All right, so then I'm going to keep moving up here. And this is really where you really get into the big, uh, you know, the big creek channels. So I went ahead and started marking it basically right in here where we could start to see it. And then we just basically follow it up as the creek channel winds around. So you'll be able to basically just get in your boat, hop on your trolling motor, get in this creek channel and just go to town. And really, like I've mentioned before, really focus on the bends and the turns and anywhere where it might come up against the bank. Um, so like in this case, this is pretty well open, but you do have a creek channel swing right here on this bank line. So that bank line right in there could be a hot spot, especially right off that point. And then basically as you're going down, these turns, these big turns are going to probably be where you're going to find the most fish. So check those out. Definitely take advantage of those creek channels. I think that is the hugest thing 
that we can offer here on this channel is to be able to show you guys exactly where those creek channels are because i'm telling you once you learn how to fish creek channels you can become a much more effective uh, fisherman so i'm going to move over here some more creek channels in here are marked so you'll see all these we've got some lay downs around that turn there so that that turn looks really good you've also got some more creek channels back in here so really well defined i uh, really really like it. it looks really awesome uh, and then moving back in here, we've got some more, more creek channels and more creek channels. So this lake is just full of awesome creek channels. It looks like it's got a lot of grass and stuff like that. And if you get in those creek channels, that's usually where you get your weed lines on your grass. And that's where the bass like to set up on. Uh, it's also where you can get your debris from your creek channels as well. So you can see all the advantages that the creek channels um, offer you here. You've also got creek channels back in here as well. Some really good turns. Looks like decent depth as well. And all of these guys, if I pull these up, you know, into 2019, they're all just going to kind of disappear. You're not going to realize that they're there. So very important to pay attention to where these channels are because you may be fishing here right up on this point and you're fishing pretty much in a, a spot that's probably not going to be a hot spot. But if you pull back just a little bit and get your boat may out, maybe further out here and start casting across these bends, you're going to have a lot more success. So just take a, take advantage of, of what we've been able to offer here. And Google Earth's offering us and then go out and see if it helps you improve your fishing. You've got some more creek channels back in here as well. Let's pull this back to 2011. you got some more coming on back in here. This was the really deep part of the channel right in here. You've got some lay downs going on on this side. And then as we move out here, this is another one of those bank lines where you know, there's just a lot going on right here in this bank line. So we've got some, a lot of laydowns right in here. There could be a creek channel close by, I'd imagine. So you've got laydowns, about four or five right in this area. And as you get further back in this pocket, um, it's very shallow, but you do have some laydowns back in here as well. So then once we get past that, I'm just going to keep going down. And we're going to get back out here closer towards the main lake. We've got some more laydowns here. We've got a couple laydowns off of these points that are out here so i really like this area right in here i would definitely check that out it looks like you got some, some standing timber and things like that to fish around as well got some debris on top of this hump this all looks pretty good right in that area and then i'm going to swing back and we're going to go back up the uh the main the main arm here and we're going to swing on up to this side and here's where we finally start seeing some different debris and laydowns and things like that so um, let's go ahead and take a look at it right here. We're going to come up. We've got multiple laydowns. You can see them here. There's multiple ones to be able to fish around. And your depth on those is probably going to be, what, five or six feet. So pretty good depth for those laydowns as long as you can get over there. I notice there's a lot of standing timber over here. So not sure how easy it is to access some of this stuff. You've also got some laydowns over here. And then as we move further up here, I was really interested in what this was. I couldn't tell at first. I was like, oh my gosh, look at all those beds. But it wasn't beds. It's like, um, I don't know if it's some kind of grass or whatever, but whenever it dies out, it leaves this, this funky looking pattern that's on the, uh, you know, on Google Earth. So very interesting area. I don't think it's really a, a fish attracting area. If it is, let me know, guys, and I'll, I'll mark it. But uh, I don't think that's really what it is. I think it's just like some dead brush and stuff like that. So then we're going to keep moving up here. Next thing we find is a ramp over in this area. When we get around this, uh, I guess this is a marina or maybe it's private docks. I'm not sure. Shirley Creek Campground. We've got some debris around these docks. Now, these are shallow docks, obviously, because you can see the water's completely gone. But a good pile of debris right here on the outside edge. Another one right here. You can see the tires and stuff and some concrete stuff going on here. So just on the outside edges of these things. And then over here, you've got some debris right off this point in two different spots. So check those out. And again, let's let's go ahead and pull that one up. It's always a good area to look at. Let's pull it to 2019 and see what it looks like when the water's up. So here you can see that's not going to be as obvious. So check out those spots definitely when you're out there. You've also got another ramp that's over here, down here in this area. It doesn't go very far out in the water. It doesn't have a lot of rock around or anything like that. But it is a ramp, so check it out. You've got laydowns over here. You've got some debris off of this point. <clears throat> some additional laydowns going on through that bank line. And then you've got a couple brush piles that are over here too. So you got one here and one here. 
And then if we move further up, very rare sight, but you actually have some rock that's right in here. Always go fish that rock, especially when there's not a ton of it around. And then as we move further up here, we've got a couple more laydowns that I marked for you guys. I'm trying to speed up a little bit so don't make this video last too long. Another laydown right in here. Good little point that comes out here, but when I pulled up and looked at it, I don't see a lot of debris off of it or anything like that. There is some standing timber right off the edge of it. Uh, so not sure on that, but definitely, you know, you might want to take a look at it and just see if there's anything attractive, especially outside of it. As we move further up here, we've got another laydown right here, a rock. You got an interesting little creek channel right here, but it just didn't seem like it was defined enough for me to mark it for you guys, so I left it alone. Got another laydown right in there. You've got some additional debris that's out here in the water. If we get further out here, you'll see it. So there's this the standing timber everywhere, but there's something right in this area. I don't know what it is, but there's definitely something there. And then as we move further up here, we're getting close to the, the far north end of the lake here. We have a couple more laydowns that are over here. So you've got three or four. You've got four different ones right in this area. Let's zoom in here and take a look at them. Spectrum is going slow today. And we got some laydowns right in here. These are those other laydowns I was showing you. And then you've got another big one right in there. Now, again, you've got a lot of standing timber. So I haven't fished this lake. I don't know if it's like fork or not, but it just looks like you, you really need some boat lanes. If you can get boat lanes, go get them for sure. Now, as we get further up here, we've got a crazy creek channel, <coughs> jamboree, jamboree, whatever you want to call it. So <clears throat> I'm just going to show you guys what I marked here. There's all kinds of channels up here, but I marked the major ones. So you can see all the major ones have been marked here. You've got two separate ones here. They kind of come out and they each kind of dump out right in this area. It just kind of fades away here. So I can't tell where it goes, but I can see that they at least make it to here. Now, where they intersect, it's always going to be a good area to fish as well. And then obviously around these points where they're touching, and then you guys heard me talk about the bends. So we're going to follow that up. This is the main creek arm, and I just went ahead and marked it for you guys so you can see where it's at. It comes all the way up here. Now, there was something interesting here. This is like an old pond, so I went ahead and marked that as well. It's like an old pond dam, and then there's your little opening in your pond dam right there. As we get further up here, it kind of splits into two different sections. And we got a multiple channels in here, but I marked the major ones. So you've got one that goes to the right and one that goes to the left. And then they kind of merge back once they get up in this area. And then you can just follow it further up in there all the way, you know, back into the uh, back to the very depths as far as you want to go. So take advantage of that, especially, you know, if you're up here and you're fishing and you're wondering, you're, maybe you're coming up and through here and there's some guy that's out here right here and you're like, what in the world is he fishing? Well, he's found the creek channel and he's found the bend on the creek channel. He's probably found some fish that are stacked up in that area. Also, don't be scared to come out here and check these out. These little kind of offshoots can be good as well. So definitely take a look at those. The main ones are usually better, but those offshoots can hold fish as well. So anyways, take a look at all of those. Hopefully that really helps you guys. I love it when I have those tracks and I can go up there. I think it just really, really makes fishing a lot simpler for me. So when I go over here, I've also got some creek channels marked in here. We've got a little intersection going on right in here too that I like. And you can see we've got another channel in here and I just can mark every one of them for you. But this one kind of breaks off and goes that way as well. So I've got a little intersection marked for you there. And then this looks like it might be an old roadbed. Little pond dam. I can't tell what it is, but it's it looks like a hard spot right in there. And you'll see as I zoom in, you'll kind of see where there's some concrete or something like that going on in that area. Got some laydowns there too. But again, you've got a lot of standing timber in the area, so just be careful. You've also got another hard spot that's just right over here too. So as we move further down here, uh, I just went ahead and marked this. This isn't really a creek channel. It's more like a ditch or a creek channel. I couldn't really tell, but I marked, looks like I'm marking as a ditch. But I just went ahead and marked this because it does have some pretty good depth right in this area. It makes some really good turns right around that standing timber. So I kind of like this right in here. It looks like it might be a little bit easier to access than some of the other stuff. But again, not really knowing where the boat lanes are, I uh, couldn't really tell you. So as we move further down here, didn't see too much going on uh, for a while until I got all the way back down here around this point. And once I got around the point, then I found a couple more things to show. And the creek channels kind of started to go away as far as being able to find those, but it was able to find some rock and stuff like that. So we got a ramp back in here. 
You've also got some riprap going on right in this area. You've also got another ramp over here and then some debris right outside of this ramp. This looks like a Hank's, Hank's Creek Park boat ramp. So right outside that boat ramp, there's a lay down. You can see it right here. So take a look at that. Also fish that boat ramp. You don't ever want to miss a boat ramp. Um, and then going in through here, there's a pretty good hump that's out here, but no, no debris on it or anything. Kind of look pointless. So not sure if that would be a good hump or not. I like fishing humps, but I don't like fishing humps when they're just bare. Uh, we also have some debris that's back in here and some laydowns that were marked. So I marked those for you guys. And then as we move further closer to 147, we got what, five more spots to show you guys. We're going to wrap this up on the Google Earth side. So we've also got some laydowns that are right here. Some more laydowns right in this area. And then as we move further up here, we've got some additional laydowns off of this side. Just a couple, not too many of them. Um, which is kind of good because when they're isolated like that, you know they're probably going to be pretty good hot spots. And as we move down in here, uh, just a lot of shallow stuff. I'm sure it's tons of fun fishing, uh, but couldn't really find anything to mark that was significant for you guys until I got back down to where that roadbed was. And that was where we found a uh, lay down that was just right off of this little area right in here. So lots of debris and stuff like that, but a pretty good lay down or a dr little drop or something going on right there. So take a look at that when you get out there. If you can access that area, again, just trees uh, galore everywhere. So I lied to you. I thought we were done, but we're not. We got a couple more spots. I was thinking that was 147, and it's not, so let's keep going on down. Now we've got another pond that's back in here. So you can see here we've got a pond dam. So I went ahead and marked that for you guys, and right in here is your opening. But if you can, get on this side, this side over here, and fish into that pond dam and see what you can find. All right, now you've also got some uh, creek channels are back in here. So take a look at the creek channels. We've also got a decent boat ramp that's back there too. And then as we move further down here, we've got another lay down. And then we're going to get into some more creek channels that are back here. These are pretty decent. So take a look at these, especially if this is all grass and hydrilla and stuff. These could be really good weed lines to fish around. So look at all of those creek channels. Definitely fish around them. You've got some more down here as well. You can see both of them right in there. And then right here, you've got, it looked like a pond, but I couldn't really say for sure it was a pond, but you definitely got some debris that's right here by this so-called pond. So take a look at right there. You can see there's just a little pile of it. I don't know what that is, it's concrete or what it is, but it's significant enough to pull up <clears throat> and see on Google Earth so you know it's got some decent size to it. And then as we move up here, we've got another ramp that's right here. It's a pretty decent ramp. It looks like a... Castles, Boykin, <laughs> boat ramp. I probably totally screwed that up. And we've also got a ramp that's right in here. And then a hard spot on both of these little points right here that they're kind of hidden, you know, on the bank line, but you've got two different hard spots right here. So take a look at those, you know, drag on the side of them, drag off the top of them and drag it down. If you can get behind it, drag up it, you know, do all you can to see if you can locate any fish in those two areas. And then as we move further back here, we're back down to 147. This is going to wrap us up, guys. We've got some rap, some rip rap that's going on right here around the bridges. You guys have heard me talk about bridges before. You always want to fish the bridges. Bridges are great places to, uh, to find fish. Hey, that wraps us up for the Google Earth segment for Sam Rayburn. As you can see, we have got tons of stuff that we have marked. Um, over here on the left side, we've got offshore hotspots still to cover and fish attractors. We talked about all the rocks, the debris, the road, the ditches, the ponds, the ramps, and the creeks. So all kinds of good stuff. This Helix only creek channel is just me working on the uh, a solution to try to figure out something for the Helix units. So hopefully I'll have that out to you guys pretty soon. Our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to talk about just the offshore stuff. So let me pull this back and show you what we're going to cover. Now we're going to jump into Navionics. So I'll be able to show you why I think these are uh, offshore hotspots, but we're going to go in here and take a look at all these offshore spots. And when we do, uh, hopefully we can uncover some stuff for you guys and really get uh, some good stuff for you. So you see here, it just, just adjusted to the right date. Sorry for all the zooming. And right here, you can see we've got lots of good offshore stuff to talk to you guys about. We've also got the fish attractors that the uh, Texas Park of Wildlife has put in there. 
which those are really easy. I basically just highlight those for you. Those are always hot spots to fish, especially if you're a crappie fisherman. So anyways, we've got a lot of stuff to cover for you guys still with Sam Rayburn. Stick around. Hopefully I'll have those videos out for you soon. If you want the SD card, if you're a Lawrence or Garmin, you can get those at simplisticfishing.com. If you are a Hummingbird user, I'm sorry. I'm still working on it. Hopefully have it out for you soon. Till next time, guys. Hope you catch your PB. Take care.